Welcome to the Affiliated Monitors Expert Podcast, hosted by Tom Fox on the Compliance Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and this is our fifth and final episode of our five-part exploration of everything you always wanted to know about monitors but were afraid to ask. I've been joined in this exploration by Jay Rosen, Mr. Monitors, and business Devel- VP of Business Development and Monitoring Specialist at Affiliated Monitors. Jay, welcome back. Tom, it's uh, been a fun week, and I'm looking forward to as uh, Cuba Gooding Judy, uh, excuse me, Cuba Gooding Jr. said to Jerry Maguire, "Show me the money." Jay, that brings yeah, that brings up today's topic, and I think this is one that really scares, frankly, a lot of people. They've heard a lot of information; it may be misinformation, but it's nef- it's nef- uh, definitely out in the ethosphere, and that's around the cost of monitorship. So, I was wondering if you could. Uh, Start off by giving us uh, some of your general thoughts about uh, the scope of the monitorship, or at least a way for people to think through this cost issue. Yeah, I I think it's a great question, Tom. Um, As we know, in any post-resolution monitorship, the monitor is most likely coming in at the end of a very long process, maybe even multiple years. And if this was an FCPA enforcement action, Uh, Like I said, it could have a years-long process with a lengthy investigation coupled with extensive remediation and then a negotiation with the government. So there is yet an approach that a company can use to help in this final leg of the process to make it more palatable. And the first thing we want to talk about is the scope of the monitorship. And the process can be broken down into three key areas. The first, which is scope. And the monitor must understand the settlement documents so that they can fully appreciate the scope of the monitor's remit and what government expects from the monitor. Some resolutions have a very narrow focus with a finite number of records or other documents to review. But with such information, the company can work to scope out a range of what costs may be Conversely, the settlement documents can be literally wide open, which obviously would have a dramatic impact on potential costs and even estimates. The next factor I'd like to look at is the frequency of engagement. Uh, This frequency, I don't actually mean uh, how often the monitors are engaged, but more taking a look at when they are coming and how often is the monitor office in the corporation? Are they there daily? Are they there weekly? Are they there there quarterly? The frequency of monitoring will have a significant impact on your overall monitorship costs. Next factor would be duration. And this is tied to the question of frequency in terms of the length of the monitorship. Will it be a year? Will it be two, three years, five years? It's a critical element to putting together a game plan. The final factor is the experience of the monitor. And basically, we're talking about the relevant experience, as we've explored previously, one really needs to look at to have a direct conversation with monitor candidates to determine if they have the requisite experience and temperament to work with other individuals or teams. And the key question here is, does the monitor understand their role as prescribed by the four corners of the settlement documents, or are they going to reinvent the wheel for each new part of the monitorship? Jay, in terms of the work plan, uh, would you suggest that the work plan really uh, tie directly into whatever the resolution documents are, whether it be a a deferred prosecution agreement or, or something along those lines, a consent degree or whatever the regulator has worked out with the individual or company and and really have that as a discussion between all of the stakeholders going forward? It really makes for the the best experience if you do that, because uh, as you're talking about mapping out this work plan, it really also can serve almost as a budget and a document for cost control. And this gives the monitor the company, and the government, a unified set of expectations for the tasks that must be accomplished. It's not to say that you can't change course or if something else comes up, but you want to believe or you actually want to agree to a set of expectations 
that will, number one, not only satisfy the regulatory agreement, but number two, will allow the company to really get everything it expects from this monitorship relationship. And another thing to talk about, when we've talked about the issues of scope and duration, another thing that we've become really good at is selective sampling. And it's important for a monitor to understand that they don't have to look at every document and turn every page. Uh, Especially, we've had situations where we have monitored global organizations that we've become very efficient. You get into town, you go spend four hours with the client, you have some interviews, you start the next day at 8 a.m., you move to 5 p.m., you run some focus groups, and you're in and you're out. So we are keenly aware of the costs that can mount over a multi-year monitorship. And we really try to, again, as we said, have no confusion, uh, have a document request, have a list of interviews, have a list of focus groups. And when you have this all planned ahead of time, you're able to be efficient. And then if some bump comes up in the road, you can consider it. But with having the roadmap in hand and having the agreement, of all three parties, we find it makes for a better monitoring experience. Jay, it almost sounds like the experience of the monitor really is a key factor in the cost because an experienced monitor, as as you said, is going to know where these bumps in the road may lay or may lie and not so much anticipate them, but could handle them with a much greater ease and a much greater cost effectiveness. Yeah, I I think you raise a good point, Tom. The other thing that we have to keep in mind is, although we have done over 750 of these, more often than not, when you're meeting with someone, this is the first time that they're in a situation. So uh, while we might know the best path to follow, you also sometimes have to hold the client's hand and get them there. So they need to get comfortable with the monitorship relationship and they need to we have to earn their trust every day we earn their trust and what is most satisfying is when we get to an end of a multi-year thing and we get that letter from the CEO or the chief compliance officer saying you know initially we were skeptical about this process we didn't know how we how it would work and after being a client of affiliated monitors for the past three to four years, we really feel that we are a better company, we're more informed, we're more ethical, we have culture, and we have the bedrock to move forward. And, you know, that's the best feeling in the world. You can't get a better advertisement than that when your client says, this is how you've helped me, and we feel good about it. Jay, uh, we're near the end of our time, but I was wondering if you could give a few thoughts around the issue of selective sampling and how a monitor can uh, use sampling to determine if further uh, work needs to be focused on an area and really how all of that works in the cost, cost analysis. Yeah, so uh, for example, we were there was an issue with a client that they were bringing on uh, joint venture partners, and there were literally only two or three people in the world who could do this job. So when we got in there, we needed to actually talk to the person who was doing, um, you know, a single request for this one vendor source. And when we looked in, we had to say, well, where are the other CVs? Where are the other interviews with people who could do the job? Where is the pricing quote? And initially, you might not see that answer. But in discussion with the person, we learned that there were only a limited number of people who could do that job. So instead of really wasting our time running a lot of analysis and looking for, uh, you know, the, the proper documentation, by having a very quick conversation, we're able to kind of sew this up. And then moving forward, we could come up with a, a plan, not a plan, but really an answer. So that really kind of took away some of the avenues where we were exploring for where the issues were. And by, again, having that conversation and sampling very quickly, we were able to get the answer and move on. So I think that, again, comes with our 
familiarity with going in, with looking at businesses. Uh, we often talk about this week in the FCPA that most of the issues come from third parties. So we're able to take that institutional knowledge, use it with the sampling, uh, come up with a relatively quick question, uh, quick answer, and then move on to the next thing. Jay, uh, we are at the end of our five-part exploration. I've been joined this week by Jay Rosen, the Vice President of Business Development and Monitoring Specialist at Affiliated Monitors. Jay, it's been a great uh, week of podcasts, and I look forward to continuing the conversation. Thanks again, Tom. This is Tom Fox again. I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of our five-part exploration of everything you wanted to know about monitors but were afraid to ask. For additional reading, see Jay Rosen's article, How Much Will a Corporate Monitor Cost?, which can be found on Corporate Compliance Insights. Also, check out Affiliated Monitor's website. I've linked to both Jay's article and the website in the show notes. 